Let's talk to Garrus. Thanks for bringing me on board, Commander. I knew working with a Spectre would be better than life at CSEC. Oh, yeah. Have you worked with a Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. <laughs> Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. At CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Maybe. But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. I like your style, Garrus. Once it done their way, protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. CSEC handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate leaving. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside CSEC. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. Yeah, we'll see. If getting the job done means endangering innocent people, then no. We get the job done right, not fast. Mm. Got it? I wasn't trying to. I understand, Commander. I'm just asserting my asserting my dominance. Okay, we can read about this thing later. Oh, Rex is down here too. Cool. Change the squad members' equipment, target the members' locker, and press E. Oh, I can change them all in here. Oh, and Ashley's down here too. This works out really well. Commander. What's your opinion on the last mission? Kinda wish you'd got there sooner, Commander. No offense, I appreciate the rescue. I just wish... You wish we'd been able to save the rest of your unit? Yes, sir. If I had been more alert, we wouldn't have been cut down by an ambush. The Geth are perfect ambushers. They don't move, they don't make noise, they don't even breathe. Sir, they have flashlight heads. <laughs> I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. Let's see. We don't have to be so, like, business-oriented all the time, do we? Do you have a few minutes to talk one-on-one? -on -one? I'm sorry, Commander. I need to get my duties squared Ooh. away. I wouldn't mind talking more Burn. later, though. Okay, later. I'll take you up on that. Dismissed, Chief. Sir? I don't know. Kind of thinks you might be into me. Nice ship you've got, Shepard. What can I do for you? What's your story, Rex? There's no story. Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. <laughs> oh, come on. You Krogan lived for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. <laughs> you and Garrus are gonna get along great then. They tried the same with us, but we fought them off. It's not the same. It seems pretty much the same to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? Wow. An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? Yeah, okay, maybe it's a bit different. I suppose it isn't all the same. <laughs> Shit. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. I was just making conversation. I wasn't trying to upset you. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. What can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Salarians if you want details. They made it. All I know... It makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth. Jesus. And most never get that far. He said only a few a few survive? Every Krogan is infected. Every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. That's nuts. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? You ask a Krogan. Would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. 
No one cares. I love this guy. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. Yeah. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to Even fight. if they did, they, they can't even so repopulate. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. Okay, well, I definitely want to know more about so that. Long, Rex. Shepard. Alright, the only other th person I would really want to talk to is Tally, who happens to be right back here. Convenient. So all of my guys are on the bottom floor here. I'll have to remember that. Field integrity monitor. We'll have to check that out. Let's talk to Adams, too. Hey, Commander, you know that Quarian, Tally? She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. <laughs> I wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. Okay, sweet. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. Okay. Fill me in on the IES stealth systems. How does it work exactly? You can't hide a ship out in space. They emit too much heat and radiation. Too easy for sensors to pick them up. Unless you find a way to capture those emissions. So our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself. No emissions to give away our location. Eventually the sinks have to be vented. More than a few hours silent running and they overheat. Cook us inside our own hull. There's no way for anyone to detect us? A visual scan can still pick us up. Anyone looking out a window can see us plain as day. But you have to be pretty close to get an actual visual out in space. Most vessels rely on scanners. As long as the stealth systems are engaged, they can't see us. Not unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. Faster than light, I assume. Why doesn't it work with faster yeah. than light travel? Cranking up the FTL, blue shifts our emissions, pushes them into frequencies too high to capture in the sinks. As soon as we make the jump, it's like setting off a flare. Sensors can pick up our location whenever we enter or exit FTL flight, but for short-range missions, our stealth systems are amazing. We've got the only one. Well, we better make sure that we maintain it then. I want to know more about the Normandy. She's the best ship I've ever served on. Probably the fastest vessel ever designed. And she's the only one using the new Tantalus Drive Core. What's so special about the Tantalus Drive Core? Proportionally, it's about twice the size of any other vessel. Not only are we faster, but we can run at FTL speeds longer before we have to discharge I the core. I think Joker was talking about the, the core size or something, but... For some reason, I think he said it was like a bit of a hindrance being so big, maybe. Or maybe I'm misremembering. Where else have you served, Adams? If you name a class of Alliance ship, I've probably served on it. Everything from dreadnoughts and carriers right down to frigates like the Normandy. My last assignment was on the Tokyo. Only a cruiser, but she was a good ship. Couldn't hold a candle to the Normandy, though. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. Alright. So we learned about a bunch of stuff from him. And let's talk to Tally. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive core like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. <laughs> the Normandy's a prototype. Cutting-edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tug ship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a Quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Gap. I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. 
We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. Okay. It seems like each of these races are, have very specific uh, talents or abilities. Like, these guys are kind of techy. The Krogan, uh, like Rex, are mainly just like battleheads. And then you've got Garrus. It seems like the Turians are kind of like really powerful overall. Like, very political, very... Um, uh, very smart, very well educated. And then you have the humans, and then we have what else? Uh, there's the salamander dudes, the Salarians, there's the Volus, there's the Elcor, the Hanar. I don't know if the keepers are like their own special thing. I'm probably even forgetting some, but it's really cool. Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy, resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million Quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on the others wow. for survival. The bonds among my people are That's... strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms That's gotta be the huge. liberties other species take for granted. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Jeez. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. That's your government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. So they each each ship is kind of like its own mini like district, town, even small city, if you so will. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials. In practice, the conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. Okay. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must Whoa. resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. That's crazy. I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. This should be good. Interesting. The Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any VI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. How come the Council didn't step in and stop you? This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. So, the Geth share brain power? 
many of the guests' logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby guests. That is crazy. Basically, the more of them you have in the group, the smarter they are. So there's some sort of group consciousness? No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. Still pretty powerful. But when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate low-level functional processes, freeing up more capacity for original or independent thought. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I'm probably oversimplifying. The Geth are incredibly advanced and complex creations. All you need to know is that they get smarter when they gather in large numbers. As we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Uh oh. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? That's the robot rise. As you can imagine, this caused a near panic among my people. I don't see what's so bad about those questions. Well, the robots. The Geth were created to engage in mundane, repetitive, or dangerous manual labor. That's fine for machines, but it won't satisfy a sentient being for long. The Geth were showing signs of rudimentary self-awareness and independent thought. If the Geth were intelligent, then we were essentially using them as slaves. It was inevitable the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us, so we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian-controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. That is crazy. Um... It, it makes sense. It's hard to think about because I can't imagine what being a virtual intelligence would be, but if you were a sentient being, as we all are, I figure that if you're a slave, you're not going to be happy about that, and you're going to defend yourself if people are trying to kill you. You can't blame them for fighting for their survival. We had no other choice. The Geth were already on the verge of revolution. By acting quickly, we had a chance to end the war before it began. The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines, incapable of organized resistance. But they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. Wow. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the Veil. Now, we drift through space. Exile searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. That is a major backfire. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. Yeah, right, this is something we of value return thing. Once we have found something of value, we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. Does it always have to be a physical can item? Can choose to reject the gift? Uh, that doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. Like, give me some examples it's here. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. I'm really interested in that. I can't believe they just send you off alone. It's not like they just cast us out. Before we leave, we are given lessons in how to survive outside the flotilla, and given gifts to help us on our journey. We also receive implants to fight off sickness and disease. Generations of living in an isolated and highly controlled environment have left our immune systems weaker than most. 
By the time we leave the fleet, we are well equipped for the pilgrimage. This is a rite of passage for all Quarians. If it were dangerous, our numbers would suffer. Which is clearly not. Virtually every pilgrimage ends with a triumphant return and the ritual presentation of the gift to one of the fleet's captains. I want to talk about something else. Like what? The thing is, though, if there's so many of them, you must imagine that they're returning, like, left, right, and center, and so they're always having these little celebrations every time somebody comes back. I should go. I would think it'd be a little bit distracting to their overall mission, but what do I know? I'm just a human. All right, so we've checked out the bottom of the ship. We've checked out the main area of the ship. And now what I would like to do is check out the top level of the ship. Just to make sure I know where everybody is. So this is the... Wait. Okay, so this is a top level. Kaiden's here and the sleeping pods and Chakwas. And then we have... This is the main area where we've got the, the galaxy map, I think it's called. Galaxy map, yep. Yeah. Which we'll have to learn about. Presley, I don't think we've talked to him. If anyone has to take over for Captain Anderson, I'm glad it's you. I'm not sure about having non-humans on our ship, though. Yeah, you just chill, you racist little navigator. I'm in charge here, Presley. I decide if we have non-humans on this vessel. Yes, sir. Understood, sir. Thank you. Speak freely, Presley. I want to know if you have a problem with non-humans. <laughs> Don't encourage him. It's not that, Commander. Humanity has always handled its own problems. Saren attacked one of our colonies. We should be the ones to stop him. We don't need their help. This is bigger than humanity. Saren's a threat to every species in the galaxy. And I'll welcome anyone who wants to help me bring him down. I guess so. Maybe I'm just stuck in the old ways of thinking. But don't worry, Commander. This won't be a problem. All right. I, I like that. At least he's he, he admits that he, like he knows he's stuck in the past. That's kind of cool. I can respect it. How did you end up assigned to the Normandy? I signed up with the Alliance as a navigator right out of school, following in my grandfather's footsteps, I guess. My first posting was on the Agincourt. We were at Elysium during the Skillian Blitz. A massive fleet of alien raiders hit the colony, trying to wipe it out. They had the numbers, but their ships were no match for an Alliance frigate. It was a slaughter. We couldn't even keep track of how many ships they lost. How'd you end up on the Normandy? I got my officer's commission after Elysium. Must have made an impression on the right people. Captain asked for me when he was picking his crew. All right, cool. Carry on, Presley. Yes, sir. And then I believe Joker is up there. What do we have right behind? Oh, this is like the council room, or I don't know what this is called exactly. But we came and talked to... Nihilus here, I believe? FTL comlink, we can read about that. Alright, I think that's pretty much it. Unless I've missed something, but I think we have a pretty good layout of the ship. And now it's probably time to direct us over to the Artemis Tau Cluster, which is where we're going to be looking for this recon team and also this uh, Dr. Liara Tassoni. She's on the Artemis Tau as well. And we've been told that we need to look for... Uh, the Prothean Ruins, and then that's where we'll find her, so... Holy, we are going to be pretty busy.